is going on guys thanks for tuning back into another tying tutorial today we are learning how to tie a brassy it's a small fly this is on a size 14 nymph hook you can tie them on caddis hooks the you know the little shrimp scud hooks um anything honestly smaller than a, a size 12 or a size 14 i mean even a size 12 is kind of pushing it it's meant to be a small fly represent a bunch of different um different insects that go through the water. Um, I'm gonna be tying this on a 3.3, 3.3 or 3.2, I forget what it is. 3.3 millimeter, yeah, okay, so a 1 8th millimeter tungsten gold bead. You can do, I've seen them in an actual copper bead with copper wire. You can do so many different variations of these. I got a bunch here in my box, some gold ones. I got some with an orange bead head. I got some with a, a rainbow bead head. Um, I've got blue ones. Oh yeah, here we go. I've got something with the pink instead of the peacock. We're doing the peacock one today. But I got some with the, the pink. I've done some with the blue and the black wire. I've done so many different kinds. They're all amazing flies. Such an essential in the fly box, especially when come spring, when those flies are hatching, the fish are going crazy, they're getting aggressive. Smack your flies, great heavy fly. They catch the bottom a lot, but you know what? They get your flies down. So let's just hop right into this. I'm using black uni thread. Uh, this is a an 8 uh, Size 14 nymph hook, 1 8 bead. So what we're gonna do, I don't add weighted wire to this. I mean, it's, it's heavy as it is. You don't want them too heavy. Um, obviously you want them rolling on the bottom. This is an amazing Eurofly, just because that line to line connection is unbelievable. You could just feel the weight, you could feel the bottom of it smacking on the bottom there. So good. So we're just gonna go right back to the very back. We're just gonna kind of put a little bit of a thread base going on there. Guys, thank you for viewing my last video as well and being subscribers and being so amazing and just supporting the channel. And I'm gonna do so many more videos like this and this year is just gonna be so awesome. I don't even know what, oh, this is just snap. But I don't even know what happened with the last video. It just kind of like, uh, you know, just kind of blew up. I don't know. I just thank you guys so much, though. It's awesome. It's so good just knowing that, you know, people are liking my videos. People are getting into the fly fishing. That's my main goal is just getting people into the fly fishing, the fly tying. Trying to get this thing back through. My bad. Oh, we'll just get right back into this. Um, yeah, but honestly, just get it getting back into like just getting people into the fly fishing. The fly tying is so much fun. It's so peaceful. You know, some of you guys out there going and seeing like therapists and stuff. And, you know, honestly, this is my therapy. This is so therapeutic. It's such a beautiful art. And it's an art that you can actually enjoy and appreciate catching fly like catching fish with something that you made. It's so beautiful. So yeah, we're just going to start, we just put the basis of the thread down, then you're going to grab all your copper wire. I just get these from, I don't know, I have a huge bag of copper wire. I was saving it all up to take it to the scrapyard, but you know what? Then I started fly tying, and I was like, hey, this is going to last me well over my lifetime, and my children's children, and children, children's children. So, we are going to take quite a long strand. This, honestly, if I was to look at this, this is probably about a 20 gauge uh, wire. Just regular copper color. This is that grade A. So this is like a really bright, pure coppery color, if you can see that. It's very bright. It's very nice. It's kind of like a fluorescent copper. So we're going to get quite a long strand, probably about six and a half inches, seven inches. You're probably not even going to need this much. I always would rather have too much rather than too little. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put it right up to behind the bead head there. If you can see, I'm sure you guys could just could have just seen that, but right there. And we're going to tie it in on the bottom. So not on the top, on the bottom. I usually tie all my wire in on the bottom. It's way easier. It's If you tie it on the side, it kind of puts an uneven bulk throughout the body. So we're going to tie this in. And we tie it about quarter of the way down the hook where it bends. And then we're just going to build it up. And now I usually have all my stuff out ready to go so I don't have to go through my big ass box and look for stuff. But we're going to get some dubbing because we are supposed to kind of build it up a little bit. I mean, you can on a, on a caddis hook, like an actual scud hook, you can because it automatically kind of builds it up for you. But on a normal nymph hook, it is not the best case. Okay, so this is some Orvis um, fine and dry dubbing. This is just an olive. I don't, I usually just use the olive stuff as just a bulking agent unless I'm tying caddis flies. So yeah, okay, so we're just gonna get a little bit here. We're just gonna build up a thorax, a little torso. Just build it up and go back a little bit to about half the thing, about half the hook shank. And then you're just gonna go right over top of it. You're just gonna build that up and try and cover it all with black thread. You're gonna wrap over this with copper, so I mean, you don't really need to just cover it completely and make sure that every little line is. It's just you want a nice smooth up landing to get the copper to go over so you don't have any issues along the way. Um, yeah. I love fishing nymphs, it's so much fun. So enjoyable just to get out on the water and fish it in, and even if you're catching small fish. Like I go down to the creek down the road from my house and I just catch ch chub on the fly. So much fun. And sure, it's not like really a sport fish. Well, not where I am. I know chub is kind of over in England and stuff like that, like the big chubs. I got some big chub in here. My little brother caught a pretty big one. He nymphed it. And uh, it's honestly, it's not even about the size of the fish. I just like catching fish, it's so fun. And you know, when you find something you're passionate about, chase that, chase that dream. Okay, so then what you're gonna do, is so you're just gonna leave it as is, leave your hook here, right behind the bead. You take your copper wire and you're just gonna wrap it. Doesn't matter, counterclockwise, clockwise, whatever. But you're gonna make sure that those wraps are very tight together because this is basically gonna form the body. You're gonna wrap right up to where the torso starts. So about three quarters the whole hook. Get those wraps right tight in together. I have never really been about the whole like ice fishing, but I mean, it's still winter, it's cold. The lake is frozen over and all my streams that I go and fly fish at are all frozen over. So I don't really have much options but to go fly ice fishing <laughs> I'm gonna try and fish some nymphs maybe a superior X leg or a micro woolly buggers I'm gonna see if I can jig them let you guys know I'll probably make a video if I end up catching something then I'll post the video I don't really know if you guys even want to see any sort of videos of me not catching something it happens quite a lot because you know you don't really catch fish every single time you go fishing and it's hard it's frustrated, frustrating. I see these guys on YouTube and they catch fish like every other cast. Then all of a sudden they post a, a video and they're like, yeah, you know, you don't catch fish every single time. And I'm like, well, every single video you do. But you know, that's the thing is it's just trial and error. And once you find the perfect recipe, the per perfect time, the perfect daylight hour, everything. And then once you find that recipe and that's it, done. Now you're slaying. Okay, this is forming a nice body. It gives it that kind of uh, like a caterpillar-ish kind of like the rings, body rings. I forget what they call that. But it gives it that nice little, uh, yeah, that nice little texture to it or feature look or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so awesome. Honestly, wrap it right up to the bead. I mean, it doesn't really matter. 
the more weight, the better, right? You're going to wrap over it, and we could just wrap over it with the peacock. So you can wrap right up, and then you're gonna just going to lock that in place. Snip the excess. It's the thing, I just flick everything around. It's horrible. <laughs> okay. And we're going to build up kind of just the torso. So right about, where is that paper? Right about there. And just here. So right, the th literally just the thorax. We're just going to kind of bulk up smoothly with the thread. And then we're going to put some peacock on. Let's just go back and forth. I like to put my fingers here so it won't go past my fingers. I can make nice couple wraps. We're going to go right to the bead. Got the peacock curls. I bought this bag when I first started fly tying. It was honestly the first material I ever bought. Didn't even know what I was buying it for. I just bought it. And honestly, it's lasted me so long. I've tied hundreds and hundreds of nymphs. And that's the Shore. Sh yeah, that's the Shore brand. Okay, so we're going to grab two peacock curls. And we're going to pull the little white pieces off on the bottom, the bases. And we're just going to tie both of those in there, right from the bead, right back. <laughs> Bring your thread right back up to the bead again. Then with these two peacock curls, you're just going to twist them. So they kind of twist all up together. Then we're just going to wrap it clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever you prefer. And we're just going to go right up to the bead. I've been kind of lacking on my how-to series. I'm supposed to do that. I was going to do that just the other day and start it. But, I mean, I've been pretty busy. Work, COVID, all sorts of crap that's going on right now. Trying to fish. It's tough. But, if you guys want to see it soon, drop a comment. Continue to share the channel. I'll just keep on tying and tying. And it'll be awesome to just bring you guys on my adventures that I go through. I am consistently, like, every weekend, all the time, just right into the bush. Okay, and then we're going to just tie off this peacock here. Now, yeah, you could just go over and over and over and over it with the peacock. Like, for instance, me, I tied it on. I went forward, then I went back over it, and then I went back over again, then tied it off. And I still have a bunch left. So, I mean, you don't really need two hurls. I usually like it just for the extra bulk. And then we're just going to do a few wraps here, lock this in place. And then we're going to tie it off. Yeah, I'm going to try some flies for ice fishing. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'll definitely let you guys know. I'll probably, yeah, make a video this weekend, a day or two from now. Fishing Lake Simcoe, see what's going on. Awesome. That's the brass. You guys can add head cement if you really want to. It's just an extra addition. I like to head cement over the tail as well. It gives it just kind of a... I don't head, head cement the peacock, though. It screws it right up. Go over the tail. It gives it a nice little slick look right on the bead. Just where you kind of built up that collar a little bit. That's all you need. Awesome. Got my dog that's coming on. Guys, that is the Brassy. I thank you so much for you guys tuning in and just watching another video. Drop a like, drop a comment, continue to just share the channel, get subscriptions. Let's let's just get this channel big. Continue to tie, continue to fish, keep a hook in your vice, and until next time guys, thanks for watching.